Steve introduced this morning, we are working on a lot of green chemistry researches at our school. Today, I will give a talk about <coughs> chemical depolymerization of lignin in our aggregates. And after that, if I have a time, I will talk about self-heating polymers as well. First, why lignin? Well, as you know, the lignin is the second most abandoned polymers in nature. And there's a lot of research going on to depolymerize lignin, which is degrade lignin, the small pieces, which is small molecules, to use as a raw material for, to create fine chemicals or chemicals or materials and so on. My research focus is try to create a new chemical degradation or chemical depolymerization method that works at like not a room temperature but a mild condition and without using a toxic chemicals like a corrosive chemical acid or base and without a high pressure or temperature. And before I describe how we can do this, I have to describe the mechanism of the polymerization of lignin first. Lignin polymerizes in nature using enzyme as a catalyst and water as a solvent. And they proceed using oxidative polymerization. Oxidative polymerization is known as a green polymerization because byproduct is only water. In nature, lignin, we, uh, na nature produces lignin, but we do have a polymer that we produce using this oxidative polymerization called PPO, which is already commercialized, and we use this PPO, polyphenol oxide, as a material for laptops or printers or these screens or projectors and so on. My first research was try to create or try to use a water as a solvent for this PPO production. And the reason why I focused on that is that because in industry, they use towing as a solvent. And because of that, they need a solvent recovery process and anti expo reactor. So by, by changing the solvent to water, we can replace this anti expo reactor to a very simple reactor. And I synthesized the catalyst for this polymerization, and I, succeed, I succeeded proceeding this polymerization in water. And at the same time, I focused on the polymerization of these phenols and found out the lead distribution mechanism, which is this mechanism, is a key for the polymerization. Well, lead distribution polymerization is the coupling between oligomers or dimers of phenols to increase the molecular weight of polymers. However, if you see this reaction, this is equilibrium reaction. So if you see this reaction from other way along, which is up from this side to this side, you can see that if you add phenol, to oligomers, we can reduce the molecular weight. So if you add phenol to trimer, which is the molecule with three units, the molecule reduced to dimer, which is the molecule with two units. So three can reduce to two. So which is which I just explained, three can reduce to two when we add phenols to our oligomers or polymers of PPO. So my first idea was, all right, what happened if we add phenols to a high molecule weight PPO, the polyphenol oxide? If this phenol, phenol attacks the PPO and can reduce the molecular weight, and it did, and we can calculate how this happens by a simple equation. So the phenol keep attacking the phenols to create oligomers. And I follow this using gel permutation chromatography. So if you don't know what the class uh, gel permutation chromatography is, gel permutation chromatography gives us the molecular weight, which is the length of the chain of polymers. And this peak is showing a high molecular weight PPO, which is a long chain. 
And this peak shows a monomer peak, which is a phenol peak. If we start the reaction, phenol start attacking a PPO, and the mercury weight keep reducing. And the mercury weight started from 10,000 can reduce to 419 by adding phenols to a long polymer chain. Then next, what? Well, if you focus on lignin, lignin also has the same bond in its structure. So now we found out the PPO, polymer oxide, can depolymerize using phenols with lead distribution mechanism, which is the phenol attacks PPO and breaks its bonds. So right now we can just try adding a phenols to this lignin to see that we can break this bond. So the reaction itself is very, very simple. We use lignin and we add phenols. And the reason why I protected these orthoven para positions of this phenol is that to avoid a polymerization of phenols. So this phenol won't polymerize. It only attacks a lignin. And we try to use a water as a solvent, which is a green solvent. And we use a catalyst to activate this phenol, which is to form a radical on this phenol, so that this radical can attack this lignin. And we control the temperature at below 100 degree so that we can do it at mild condition. And we chose two lignins. One is crazen lignin, and another one is orgosoluble lignin, which we say like methanol insoluble lignin. So we isolated crazen lignin from wood, and we bought orgosoluble lignin from Aldrich, and we purify it using methanol. And then we add a phenol into uh, this lignin. And you can see the lignin a phenol attacks a lignin and the molecular weight reduced to oligomerous level. To make a long story short, the lignin had 8,500 molecular weight. By adding phenol, the molecular weight reduced to 1,500 after nine hours of reaction. Next one. Well, we succeeded to, do, uh, to carry out depolymerization of lignin using phenol, phenols in water. And next, we tried ionic liquids. The reason why we selected these two ionic liquids is that these ionic liquids is known to deserve lignin. So you can see that the lignin can dissolve in this, these two ionic liquids. So it forms a heterogeneous or homogeneous solution. And we check the depolymerization behavior of lignin in well, lignin in ionic liquids, especially this is in M lignin, using M lignin, methanol insoluble lignin. And you can see that same thing happened. So the phenols attacks lignin. <coughs> And we start, forming, uh, we start getting a low molecular weight polymers, which is oligomers. So 8,500 mo molecular weight reduced to 1,300 after nine hours of reaction using this ionic liquid. With this one, 8,500 reduced to 1,700. And we found that we have a very narrow, which well, is not a berry, but narrow polydispersity from this ionic liquid. And we believe that this is because of the homogeneous, because of homogeneous solution of, the, or homo, of lignin. And we also try a crazen lignin, which we isolated from wood, and 5,000 molecular weight reduced to 1,200. And we check the mechanism of this reaction. So as I mentioned, this reaction is a um, re reaction between uh, lignin with phenols, and phenol have to be activated by copper catalyst, which forms a radical on phenol, and we check the amount of radical using ESR, and we confirm that this reaction is by radical coupling. And after that, we isolate a small piece, 
of degree, which is the Mercury wave with around 700, by using this simple size exclusion chromatography. And then we use this 700 molecule weight ligand to produce a new polymer, which is polyester, which is biodegraded plastic, by, mix, by using a simple esterification reaction. The molecular weight was about 15,000, and we confirmed the structure using IR, and we checked the, well, the property of this polymer using TGA and DSC, and we got a glass torsion point around, around 90 degree, and it was stable till 200 degree. So now we have a glass torsion point, and it is showing that now the polymer is kind of becoming a linear structure. The ligand itself is highly crossing structure, a uh, polymer. However, now we have a very small pieces of ligand. So by using this reaction, it forms a linear well, we can't say it's 100% linear, but linear type polymer from this reaction. All right, and I'm also working on using a simple solid catalyst for this type of polymerization. And we have a nano, no, nano rods, which is, has a very nice structure. And we modify these nano rods using an enzyme. So the idea of this Polymerization is using enzyme as a catalyst. The reason is because lignin in nature is using enzyme for polymerization. So we try to use enzyme for a PPO production, PPO polymerization. But however, as you know, the enzyme itself is not that stable in organic solvent. So we have to modify it, enzyme inside this nano lot, so it becomes stable even in organic solvents. And you can see that now we can do this polymerization, even in acetone. And you know, still, we need like at least like 80 or well, 20% of water, but we can undergo a polymerization even with 80% acetone. And the last topic is self-feeding polymers, well, the reversible polymer. The idea of my self-feeding polymer is try to create a polymers which has a reversible bond. So if you can create a polymer which has a reversible bond, we can easily break this bond and bring it back to monomer or small pieces. So we can recycle a polymer, which is or reuse polymers, because the polymer goes back to monomer very easily, and we can repolymerize it back to polymer. And I focus on reversible reactions. This one, we, we focused on the simine dimerization reaction, which is known as a reversible reaction, which is photoreversible reaction. So it forms a bond by 200 nanometer wavelengths, and it deform or be, break the bonds at 249 nanometer wavelengths. By using this, now we can create a polymer using this reaction. And it can depolymerize de it and goes back easily to monomer. So it is completely like reusable or recyclable or reversible polymers. And this is the ZPC that's showing the monomer becomes polymer, and the polymer goes back to monomer, and po monomer goes back to polymer, monomer, polymer. So we can reuse and recycle that polymer. And we also fo uh, focus on these other reactions, which is thermal reversible reaction. So these other reaction forms a bond by heat <coughs> around 70 degree, but it breaks down when we heat it up around 110 degree. And we synthesize this, well, we call it as cross anchor, which is, has the these other units with two diamine, then with that and that amine. And then we react this with a simple epoxy monomers, that which is commercially available. And we mix these two to form a new polymer, which has a lot of these other units. And now, because we have a these other unit, we can break up those bonds by heat, and which now we form the self-heating polymers. So the 
heal, or well, we can heal the cracks or the scratch by just adding some temperature to it. Still, we have to heat it up more than 100 degrees. But by heating up, we break the bonds on the surface, and small pieces start flowing and heal this crack. And by cooling down, it goes back to nice, tough, crusting surface. So by using this, these are the reactions. Now we have a, a heat or thermal self-heating coatings, which we can reversible and we can reuse using this stuff. And I would like to thank to my student, and especially the SEPA. She worked for uh, lignin depolymerization, and pre work for the reversal polymerization. And I would like to thanks to Tony Patty, who is a collaborator uh, for the, the project focus on lignin depolymerization, and Lee Jin Hei, which is he's a collaborator for that enzyme modified polymerization or enzyme modified catalyst polymerization. And thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much for the presentation, and I think there are questions. <clears throat> In your, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> in your depolymerization uh, reaction, I seem to be uh, the min ma minimum the molecule weight can reach is about 1,000 or 1,200. And uh, can you do that even more, it, or you run out of structure of uh, ether? Is that uh, what, what that means? Yes, well, that's a, I think that's a great question. Well, the reason why we can't depolymerize more than 1,500 is mm -hmm. the lignin contains a lot of different bonds. The bonds that we are breaking is just this bond, which is aryl ether bond. Mm -hmm. By adding a phenol, the phenol attacks only this place, which is only this bond. So the other bonds is stable, which we can't you know, break those things. So that's why molecular weight only goes down to 1,500. It only goes to oligomers. So we can't break down and we can't make more smaller pieces. So right now we are focused on creating a like, combination techniques. So the first, we break these things using a new developed technique, which create 1,500. And we can use another technique to break those things, which is the other bonds, to form more small pieces. OK, the next question I have is the, uh, the poly ester you are making, did you, what kind of the uh, T sub G you are, you are making? You have molecular weight yeah. up to about 20,000, but uh, yeah. the, the, uh, the thermal stability, TG, how much? How oh, you high mean this TG? one? The uh, TG no, no, of this one? No, this one. one. This ah, polyester? Just the, uh, the polyester you react oh, with TG the is, TG is 90 degree. 90 degree? Yeah. OK, thank you very much. Can you recover the um, copper catalyst s sufficiently well so that it doesn't carry over to the product? Yeah, especially well, if we use water. No, we, have, we are using the water-soluble catalyst, the water-soluble copper complex. So the complex usually stays in water. It won't go into polymer. And we already you know, checked the amount of copper in polymer. It was kind of like a, a very trace, which we can't detect it. Any more questions? Okay. Yep. Okay,